What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, it's real. We got confirmation. The Ice River KS2 was officially unveiled on Red Panda Mining's live stream last night and it's legit. And I know a lot of people did not think that this was real. A lot of people said it was fake. A lot of people say this is a scam still. And the big question is, now that we know it's real, where do we go from here? And I wanted to wait until we had confirmation before making a video about this subject because I believe that it was real based off of the increase in hash rate that I was seeing. But, you know, who's to say for sure that there's not a ton of FPGAs out there just coming online? But I think this is enough to solidify it. It is in fact real and they have more than one uh, in fact there are three different models so we've got the KS0 the KS1 and the KS2 so the KS0 it's gonna get you a hundred giga hash at roughly a hundred watts and then the KS1 is going to get you one tera hash at 600 watts and the KS2 is going to get you 2 tera hash at 1200 watts. And these are all extremely profitable right at this very moment. If we take a look at Caspa though, the price is suffering. We're currently down over 11.5%, currently sitting at 0.023, well, 024. And <laughs> if you take a look at the difficulty on Caspa or the hash rate, it looks like it started to tick up at the end of February. We had a significant jump. We went from around 350 terahash to 464. And then also another significant jump around March 26th. We jumped up uh, about 100, 200 terahash there. And then between April 10th and April 13th, we jumped up to one petahash. And then we peaked out at 1.1779 petahash, and we've gone sideways since about April 16th until the time of recording right now, which is April 21st. You're probably watching this on April 22nd. So, you know, a lot of people think that this is just terrible. You know, we've got another situation that's going to be similar to Kadena. There's going to be massive amounts of selling pressure, and the coin's not going to get to its true potential because of this. And I, I take the flip side of that argument. I think that it's very bullish for Caspa. Uh, I think that this is one of the fastest production times on an ASIC that has ever been done. And I think that speaks volumes to the belief in Caspa. Unfortunately, you know, it, it's a vicious cycle when it comes to dealing with the turnover of this type of equipment. I think FPGAs got on Casper pretty quickly. I think that those large farms that have FPGAs are providing that equipment now on the secondhand market through places like Coastal Crypto and others. And let's take a listen to what Son of a Tech speculated uh, here recently. This was in a live stream uh, earlier this evening. So. Was converting all radiant to Caspa since mining has uh, is no good anymore. Um, well, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 like, I don't know how much is floating around from FPGAs and um, all of that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I do know. I do think that any FPGA manufacturer has probably already dumped all of their CASPA at this point. So I wouldn't really worry about that or FPGA miners. I think they dumped already. I think that's pretty much done. Um, now if Ice River's playing the same game, which is hard to tell if they are or not, the thing is, is like the amount of hash rate that increased that coincided with the announcement was kind of odd in the first place. There could be a whole other set of ASICs going on here, because from my understanding, it was a short, it was a short release window, or not, it was a short or a low amount, I suppose, of, of stock for the Ice River. 
I do think that something curious is up with Ice River. Uh, so I'll be curious to see what happens with Red Panda and, and everything from that perspective. So if we take a look back at price on CASPA, uh, looks like we had a significant jump at around March 25th. We went from 0.16 cents all the way up to 4 cents which is significant and that peaked out around April 2nd, April 3rd or so. And if we take a look back at the difficulty, April 3rd would be about right here. So let's say for example, if the FPGA miners did pump up the price of CASPA just so that they could unload their equipment and perhaps upgrade to these ASICs, you know, the question is, when did they get the ASICs? And it looks like, you know, a lot of people may have gotten ASICs sometime around April 11th. So if they exited on April 2nd, purchased these ASIC miners shortly thereafter, uh, they obviously would have used a lot of CASPA to cash out and purchase those ASICs. And from there, we've pretty much gone down. And CASPA has been doing its own thing not really correlated to Bitcoin price too much, but of course Bitcoin and the rest of the market is going down at the moment as well. But I wanted to kind of take the opportunity to to look at what happened in the past in similar situations. So it looks like around April 4th, which is ironic that it was the same time frame in 2018, we have the first Ethereum ASIC has just launched with a major caveat. And if we take a look and compare the chart of CASPA to the chart of Ethereum based on the announcement of ASICs, you might start to see a little bit of correlation between them. So let's take a look at CASPA here real quick. So this chart doesn't go back too far. This goes back to, uh, let's see here. September 27th of 2022 and we have pretty much held this line of support uh, ever since then but it looks like we're probably going to retest that line of support sometime around May 1st if I were to guess or if this were to play out like I would expect and if we take a look at Ethereum uh, it held this line of support for a significant amount of time this goes all the way back to Uh, roughly October 22nd of 2015. Now if we take a look at October or September of 2017, let's see. So right around here would be, uh, if we're comparing the charts, we're going back to the beginning of CASPA on that chart would be about right here. But we're holding this line of support, and then if ASICs were announced on March 4th, or excuse me, April 4th, that would be right here at the bottom of this trough. And then what did we do immediately after that? We bounced back up, and according to what I can find, looking at the difficulty chart of Ethereum, uh, if we go back to roughly what do we say April 4th yeah April 4th was when that article came out which would be about right here but you can tell that the price had had been up significantly up and until the announcement of the ASICs for Ethereum and then from there we hit a bottom uh, roughly about a week later and then we started to trend up once again now hash rate did fall off significantly um, when the price of Ethereum started to go down, but I believe that those ASICs for Ethereum were shipped around July. And, you know, to me, what that tells me with, with hash rate pretty much kind of going sideways throughout this time is there was definitely some mining going on on that equipment. If you look at hash rate, we, we jumped drama dramatically from roughly the end of 2017 
all the way up until the announcement of the ASICs. Difficulty pumped up a little bit uh, when people or home miners started receiving them. But then when the price of ETH went down, of course, the hash rate went down with it. And it bottomed out roughly February 9th of 2019. So if, let's say, for example, if CASPA repeats some of the same behavior, then if we take a look at this chart here, um, we will most likely proceed to do what Ethereum did. And it looks like after August, it came down significantly until roughly December before we hit a bottom. And if we take a look back at the difficulty on Ethereum, December would be roughly about here. So difficulty was close to a bottom here, um, and then price didn't hit a bottom until, uh, what did we say? December? Yeah. So it all kind of coincides, and I guess what I'm getting at is I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Caspa have some similar behavior as to what we saw out of ETH once we knew that, that ASICs were on the network. But long term, in my opinion, you know, if you just zoom out, take a look at this, then obviously <laughs> we still got a ways to go before we we hit some type of top again. But if we take a look at this, a measured move from the top of that to this was roughly about a 221% increase over the course of, oh, roughly 1,200 days or so. So, I, I don't think that this is detrimental to CASPA. In fact, I, I think quite the opposite. I think that the creation of an ASIC for CASPA spe specifically uh, is very bullish for the whole project. And it's unfortunate that we can't continue to accumulate more with GPUs. But the big question is, are you going to risk your hard-earned crypto or money, fiat, for buying one of these ASICs and I'll just let you know I went through the process of getting all the way to the checkout cart and I just couldn't do it and a couple of reasons that I couldn't do it number one uh, it looks like the earliest that they're going to start shipping these things uh, is going to be June to July uh, in fact I was looking at getting the KS0, which is really the only thing that I could afford to do. Uh, but it shows June 15th through June 30th here. But let's say, for example, you know, if these insiders have these and they're getting them before we're able to get them shipped, then we know that hash rate is going to continue to increase. So right now, you're looking at a return on investment of about 41 days on the KS0 and perhaps even longer now that the price of Caspa has gone down a little bit but you know do you really expect that to be the case once you are actually able to have this in your hands and plug it in and start mining because if they ship at the end of June which is very unlikely in my opinion um, you're still looking at a significant amount of shipping time depending on where you live uh, I know here in the U.S., you know, you've got to go through customs and lots of other fun stuff. So, you know, I don't think that they're going to be as profitable as they appear to be right now by the time that you receive them. Because A, the network difficulty could go up dramatically. And B, the price of CASPA could continue to go down. So, you know, for me, I, I would love to have one. But I, I'm personally not going to risk it because I have no recourse whatsoever to get my money back if this does, in fact, turn out to be a scam. Which, again, you know, it looks like the products are real, but that doesn't mean that they have to follow through with delivering it just because it's in existence. So just something to keep in mind, you know, where we go from here, I, I speculate that the price of Caspa is going to suffer. Um, but long term, you know, the fact that we're building ASICs for CAS was very bullish in my opinion. So do what you want, not financial advice. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you would do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.